got love for you, man. You know what, I'm what are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take this serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome. Trying to make up for lost time. I'm your host, Cabbie Richards. I took about a month sabbatical from the podcast, but now I'm back. I will be more regular with these episodes, and I do appreciate the reminders I get on Twitter from you guys with the Where's the Next podcast. I read the app mentions. I see them. I hear you. I'm on it. I've got a bunch of uh, upcoming projects on the TV side coming in the next few weeks. Interviews with the cast of Pain and Gain with Mark Wahlberg and Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. I don't know if, I don't know if I'll ever get used to Dwayne Johnson. Eventually, it'll just be, he might even just go by DJ at some point because he probably was DJ when he was a kid growing up in um, Pennsylvania. Anyway, I measure the rock's biceps in the interview. So it'll be interesting to uh, for you guys to see how big they are. Uh, conversations with George St. Pierre uh, from the UFC and ASAP Rocky, who is a hip-hop artist, are coming as well. In the shortened NHL season, my guest has made quite an impact in the city of Toronto wearing the blue and white sweater. When he got here... He was immediately given a tour by the city's best tour guide and reminded that every Saturday night, an entire nation is watching him play. No pressure. Always honest, always engaging, always accommodating with his time. Number 21 in the program joins me on the phone right now. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. I met this young man as a rookie with the Philadelphia Flyers on their run to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2010. Since then, he's appeared in a Hollywood film. This is 40. He's now carrying the weight of an entire Leafs nation. He got a tour of Toronto with the best wingman the city has to offer, Joffrey Lupul. He won the TSN NCAA March Madness pool and is known in this city as JVR, James Van Riemsdyk. Welcome to the podcast. How are you, man? I'm doing good. It sounds like I'm uh, pretty versatile, too, with all those accolades you just listed off. Dude, you, like, you're probably ambidextrous also, and I'm not even exactly sure what that means, but I, I imagine you can, like, when you're playing ping pong in the room, uh, that you could just go both way, like you just left and right. Your 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 game is like an A plus. You know what? I should ch- challenge myself with that next time and uh, try try it with the left hand. See how Who who's the worst ping pong player in that room? Uh, I'm not too sure who the worst is, but I, I think the best might be uh, Dion. Uh, he's he's pretty tough. We put, we actually had a day uh, where all of us played some pool and ping pong together, and his serve is pretty unhittable. So uh, really. Give him some credit for that, yeah. You know why? Because he spent those years in Calgary and they weren't making the playoffs a lot. There you go. Actually, no, actually, that, only, all the, <laughs> that only happened a couple of times, I think, actually. Now that I think back, I think they're they're uh, halfway decent. Uh, on Twitter, you can find him at JVReamer21, all one word, lowercase J-V-R-E-E-M-E-R-21. Now, uh, James, um, what were your childhood nicknames? You know what? It's, it started uh, my... It's actually kind of funny. My my uh, soccer coaches when I was younger used to call me Jimmy, and I used to hate it. So uh, so my dad to this day he he calls me Jimmy. I wouldn't answer to Jimmy when I was younger, so he calls me that. And then obviously my other ones are uh, Reamer and JVR. So uh, but the one that kind of seems to stick that my dad still calls me as a joke is uh, Jimmy. So that one's kind of funny. <laughs> what does uh, what does mom call you? Does she call you her favorite? Uh, you know, I think that uh, that accolade goes to my middle brother, uh, Trevor. He's a mama's boy, so I think he might be the favorite of the three of us. So, Tre- <laughs> and what, what's your youngest brother's name? Uh, Brendan. Brendan, BBR, okay. As, he, as he's dubbed himself. <laughs> I see BBR. <laughs> There's JVR, TVR, and BVR. 
Um, exactly. It's it's weird that the middle child is uh, the favorite. Actually, in my family, I have uh, two brothers. Well, I have three uh, brothers, but my older brother, um, we we have different moms because my dad, you know, he gets down like that. But uh, in the house, we're three boys, and um, the middle child, my brother Omari, that he he's my mom's favorite, and I think my dad's favorite is my my youngest brother Justin, who is the baby. Who do you think your dad's favorite is? Wow, uh, you know what? I I think for my dad, I'm, I'm gonna have to go with myself. I think my <laughs> not to toot my own horn for this one, but uh, I just I think that's what my brothers would say too. Just with all the traveling he does to come watch games and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, I'll have to go with me for that one. So I'll leave my uh, my youngest brother doesn't get much love, I guess. Right <laughs> but he had, for his whole life, he probably got the best Christmas presents because the baby always gets spoiled. Agree or disagree? Oh yeah, he can get away with murder uh, when he's at home. I, I know the, the curfew gets stretched. There's different of course, ways yeah. to get away with and uh, all that good stuff. So it's kind of funny. So your pops, he is appreciating the perks uh, with being uh, with uh, being the dad of a of a son who um, carries the weight of Leaf Nation and and uh, and who's um, uh, whose son is a professional who's been a professional athlete for is this your fourth season, your third or your fourth season? This is my fourth season. Your fourth season. So how many trips does uh, does your pops get to take in the span of a, a season? You know what, in Philly it was pretty convenient for him. I think he was at almost every home game. He was only an hour and a half drive away uh, from, from home there. So that was obviously, he was really, uh, really enjoyed that. But this year it's actually kind of funny. He uh, does a lot of business in Canada. Really? Uh, throughout the year. So uh, he's scheduled a couple different road trips, whether it be to Montreal and up to Toronto to to, to to see some games and do some business uh, in air quotes, uh, <laughs> as he likes to call it. So, uh, so it's pretty funny. He's been up for a couple business trips this year, so uh, he enjoys getting up here to Toronto. Yeah, the the business is uh, telling people that you're his son. That's his business. So he, <laughs> he's he's like your unofficial publicist. Yeah, you know what? It's kind of funny. It was definitely a little heartbroken when he found out there was no father's trip this year because he usually enjoys. Uh, uh, going out there with uh, all the other uh, dads and stuff and hanging out with the team and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully next year we'll get to do that. Oh, wait, you guys didn't have a father's trip because it, no- like it like because of the lockout? Like it was, Is it normally in the earlier part of the season? Yeah, you know, it, just because of the lockout, I think. I, I know some teams actually did do them, but just maybe the schedule-wise didn't work out for us because obviously the, the games are crammed into a tighter period. So uh, they, I guess they didn't think it was a good, there was a good time to do it this year. Now, um, okay, so you mentioned uh, Philadelphia, and um, and your your dad would attend most of those home games. Um, the last time I uh, I spoke to uh, I spoke to G I spoke to Claude Giroux. Uh, I made a I I had texted I texted uh, Mike Richards beforehand, and I said, "Is there anything you want me to say to G in the interview?" And he and he reminded him that G is a horrible uh, poker player on the plane. Um, and then when I asked G about it, he said that Richie was the worst poker player on the team on the plane. Uh, as an outside observer, uh, but with um, but with the benefit of being in the inner circle, who has the better claim to um, who has the more accurate claim to being a better poker player from what you saw on those team planes, those flights? Yeah, you know, I think they both battled it up, but I have to give G the edge. I think. Uh... I think he was one of the better players on the on the fly. I know actually last year I got him on the game uh, when those guys uh, got traded. So uh, my nickname was actually Van Reba. So you know I'm not in the discussion for the best uh, for the best player. So. <laughs> Van uh, Reba. Van Reba, as in uh, I need more chips. Uh, my chips are all gone. <laughs> <laughs> so you're actually James. You're actually the best guy to have at a poker table. I'd like to invite. So now that we're like, when people hear this, you might just get random invitations to play poker. Don't take them, though, because you're going to have to just, if <laughs> if that nickname still holds true, then uh, you'll be spending a lot of money in uh, some back rooms here in uh, in Toronto. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's always fun to play, but it's not too fun to lose. So. What's the, what's the, what's the most, okay, so here's a quick story. I was, um, I was at a wedding a few years ago, a friend of mine, a uh, close friend of mine is from Boston, but he had his wedding in Vermont. And, you know, during the reception, we're kind of shooting the breeze with some of the guys. And 
This this happened. I want to say the story took place in like 08, 07 or 08. So like the economy was still robust, and one dude worked for uh, Marquise Jets, which Marquise was. I'm not even sure if it's still in existence, but it was like a private. Yeah, I've pri- heard of that before. Yeah. Yeah, it was a private flight service where like rich people uh, would you know buy hours and uh, they fly around. So the guy, I, can't, I think his name was Ian. He was talking about his boss who. Uh, ran uh, Marquise Jets, and his boss was in a card game with Alex Rodriguez and Jay Z. Okay, so this is the kind of these are the kind of clientele this kid was rolling with. Yeah. And and Jay Z put his watch like in the middle, and A Rod laid down. No, no, Jay Z laid down a sorry, Jay Z laid down a brace. Um, excuse me, a chain, and A Rod laid down a. a a watch into the pot as for collateral or something like that. And and that's okay, that's that's those guys are like you know, those guys are hundred millionaires. Yeah, what's the what yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so in your card games, what's the most that you've seen in the middle of that pot or what what's the what's the if you can say, how high did the stakes get that you witnessed in a card game? Yeah, you know, it hasn't ever gotten to that point, but uh, you know what, if we're playing for that kind of stuff, I wouldn't mind uh, playing for one of Dion's watches because he's got a couple nice ones in there, so uh, <laughs> that'd be kind of nice. How is, uh, how is your captain as a card player? Uh, you know what, he, on, on the table this year we have a couple a couple good players, but uh, I don't think Dion is towards the, t- towards the top of that list. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is like, Every once in a while, I'll just have random combos with some of you dudes, some of you guys on the team, and and it's it's kind of like um, like he, Dion, I, I you know his his choice in music, you know, and he run, he still runs the iPod in the room, yeah. Uh you know what? Actually, this year it's been between uh, Bozak and Franson have taken over. I don't know if he got uh, overtaken from. He got he got voted out in the tribal DJ, council. But, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so so and and I remember hearing that his Dion's uh, choice in music was. In fact, he was on this podcast. I can't remember if we spoke about it, but he really likes pop music. And by pop music, I'm like, I'm not even, I'm not even talking like top forty. I'm talking like top ten. So it's like Rihanna, Lady Gaga, Bieber. So Dion, you know, he gets his fair uh, share of chirps, as you guys, as yeah. you guys might say. Does that, uh, the <laughs> do you guys chirp him to his face, or does he get a little bit when uh, he leaves the room? You know what? With the, as far as the music and stuff goes, I think that's kind of similar to the stuff we listened to this year. I know uh, I won't name any names, but there were there were quite a few of us that attended uh, one of the nights of the Rihanna concert, and we all enjoyed it thoroughly. So that's that's, <laughs> that's quite a few. That means you were uh, among them because you it, just it, said we. One thing I, I was among them. Yes, and to say. Uh, it's kind of funny. We, we not only did we have some of the the top uh, the top forty Rihanna on there. I think there was also some just from her CD that maybe only the true Rihanna fans would know. So uh, I don't know if we can be considered in that category, but she's got some good tunes out there for sure. I uh, wow, that's a, that's a nice admission by you. Did, was the concert? How was the concert? It was actually pretty good. I'll give her some credit. She's a uh, she's pretty good uh, performer live, and uh, it was a pretty pretty good show. I'll give her that. How many um, concerts do you get to go to? I know that uh, Lupul is like a big festival and concert guy. How many would you say you get to in a year? Yeah, I love love going as well. So usually before the year starts, I'll try to check out to see what acts are coming to town. If we're at home, uh, I'll try to get to do that. But I'd say at least uh, 10 or so throughout the year. I know the, a, a pretty big thrill for me last year was I got to see uh, – Bruce Springsteen in Philadelphia. That's something I always wanted to do, being a Jersey guy, uh, seeing him live, and he put on an unbelievable show. Did you bring your pops to that one? Yeah, I actually brought my dad to that one, so he was pumped about uh, <laughs> going to see that one. Too, so, <laughs> so, yeah, again, uh, increasing the odds or, uh, you know, putting more votes in, in the ballot box for JVR being the favorite son by one Mr. Van Riemsdyk. Yeah. Exactly. I don't think my youngest brother can swing that kind of stuff yet, so I'll keep uh, doing that while I can. Now, you mentioned Philadelphia and going to um, concerts in Philly. Last um, Labor Day, I went to the Made in America. Uh, I guess it's a festival with the headliner being Jay-Z on the Friday, and the, and the Saturday it was Pearl Jam. This year, 
Uh, Beyonce is headlining one night, and Nine Inch Nails is headlining the other night. Might you, do you have any interest in seeing either one of those um, per, uh, artists? Uh, you know what, I, I, I don't even think I can name a Nine Inch Nails song, but uh, I don't know. Well, you, can name a, you can name a Beyonce song. I probably could, yeah. I'm sure <laughs> I can. So maybe I'd more inclined to her versus Nine Inch Nails. Give me one. Give me off the top. Give me a Beyonce song off the top of your head. Wow, I'm struggling right now to think of one off the top of my head. Uh, let me think about that for a second. I'm, you know what? I I'd, I don't maybe know the names off the top of my head, but I'm sure if I heard heard it, I'd know what it is. Dude, just hum hum one of them. Hum hum like <laughs> I can't even think of it. Right Jay, now. yeah, hum hum like you know you know the chorus to Single Ladies. Hum that one. <laughs> that was outstanding. Uh, that might that may have been my favorite moment in all of these uh, uh, conversations. Is you humming the chorus <laughs> to single ladies? Yeah, that's right. That one's always usually when you're out on a Saturday, you hear that one. Oh yeah, absolutely. So so okay. So there's like, have you been to like Coachella or Bonnaroo or? I don't know, Glastonbury. Have you been to any of those, any of those like big ones where it's like three days and you're out there for like 14 hours, grimy as hell, sweaty. There are women everywhere. You're not really sober because of the heat and the other things. What have you been to any of those? You know what? Unfortunately, I haven't uh, been able to check any of those out. But I have heard you're forgetting a, a, a key one that all the Midwesterners uh, like to go to uh, it's We Fest, the country music one in oh. Minnesota, and I actually uh, just got a place out there recently, so maybe I'll have to check that one out. This Wait, summer. you got a place where? In Minnesota. Oh, and it's called We Fest, like W E, like We as in a, a community I, us. I I believe so. I don't know too much about it, but I've heard people raving uh, about going out there, and it's like the same sort of thing. You kind of you camp out or whatever for a few days, and there's a lot of. Uh, different acts that come to town so wait a uh, second james you bought a place in minneapolis uh on a lake out there yes oh okay so you bought like a cottage yes uh do you guys call them cottages uh i more of a, I, I just call it like a lake house i guess i don't know summer house uh, is that a ca ca canadian thing cottage yeah we say cottage actually well well, well it's it's weird because like, some people in like the northern part of the country they say a camp like they like um like um, Eric Stahl, he, he's from uh, Thunder Bay, Ontario. Well, Eric Jordan, Mark, they're from Thunder Bay, Ontario. So they say camp, like their big ass um, summer house, which is huge. They, that's a camp. But like, um, and Richie and Mike Richards, who lives up in that er part of the woods, he says, uh, well, he just said he says his place. But but other people, like people from Toronto, who are rich and have. Uh, cottages in like Muskoka or other like lakes in in this province they say cottage so in different uh -huh. different parts of the country they say different but ge generally I think granted this might be my Toronto bias we say cottages uh, okay I'll have to work on that then to really uh, to blend in myself to the Can Canadian uh, population here so okay so like in the summertime I know okay so I mentioned Lupul already Lupul's a big music festival guy he runs with like Scotty Upshaw, uh, Paul Bissonnette, Kevin Connolly, who was like E from Entourage. Like that's, there's some other guys, but that's like, you know, Lupul's crew. And in the NBA, like LeBron, D. Wade, Chris Paul, Carmelo, like that's like another crew where those guys like hang out in the off season. Who, who's in your crew? Who like, who are guys that, that people listening to this would know that's in your crew? Yeah, you know, actually, most of most of the guys I still hang out with are just from uh, either college or guys I played with uh, in the U.S. program. But uh, yeah, I guess a couple of names that people would recognize that I see quite a bit is Eric Johnson uh, out in Minnesota in the summer a lot, and uh, pretty good buddies with him. So we do a lot of different things together. And uh, in the summer, I train with uh, Max Pacioretty and uh, Matt Molson, so I see those guys quite a bit. So I guess I uh, would consider them part of that. That's what those are. Your, those are dudes in your crew. That's not. I remember hearing that you were. Did you grow up with or spend a lot of time with Patrick Kane? Weren't you guys boys? Uh no, we actually just we played it with each other in the U.S. program, but uh, 
we didn't grow up playing against each other or anything like that. Oh, I thought you guys. I thought you guys were were. Um, I thought you guys were boys. That's my mistake. So, how did the movie This Is Forty come about? Uh, you know what? We'll have to thank uh, uh, Lappy for taking a slap shot uh, in the face and missing some teeth because that's pretty much how we got the uh, got the gig. They wanted a hockey player with uh, without any teeth and. He, I guess his name came up, and they asked him to bring some teammates with him, and I happened to be a tag along for that, so it was pretty cool to to go out there and do all that. So wait, you're talking Ian Lapierre? Yeah, Ian well, Lapierre. Lapierre, Lapier, Lapier, excuse me. <laughs> if you call him Lapierre, that, that gets them fired up. So I guess we'll keep calling him Ian Lapierre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's Lapierre, but Ian, yeah. Ian Lapierre. La, La, what did I? What what the hell did I just? You say? call him Lapierre. Lapierre, <laughs> he <doesn't> right? Like that. <laughs> and he hates that. So wait a yeah. second. Wait a second. Okay, rewind. So, the producers of This Is Forty are just, were just looking to cast a hockey player with missing teeth. So how did they even find him? That's a great question. I think it had to obviously do with with his time. He played out in L.A. for a few years, so I think that had to do with it a bit too. So I, I'm not sure on the full details of it. I didn't really ask too many questions. It was pretty cool to to be in, involved with all that. So once they told us it was uh, that they invited us to come out there and do that, we all jumped at it. So it was pretty good. So it was you, Scott Hartnell, Ian, who else was in it? There's two other guys, right? Uh, just one other guy, Matt Carl. Matt Carl. So you guys flew to Los Angeles to film the scene? But, yeah, we basically flew out there, uh, did the day shooting the movie, and then we were basically there for a little more than 48 hours only to do that like a couple summers ago. Uh, and uh, how hot is Megan Fox in real life? Yeah, we'll get her. She, she's uh, she's pretty good. We'll have to give her some high marks for that. Wait, but no, we can't say she's pretty. She's one of the dopest chicks in Hollywood, man. Unless <laughs> unless you had an experience with her that has now tainted your opinion. Unless she was like she wasn't that friendly or wasn't that nice or like super high maintenance. I get that. But as far as looks go and persona, she's got to oh, yeah, be in the top yeah, ten in Hollywood. She's a knockout. Yeah, she's pretty. She's definitely. She's really good. <laughs> Not to. Yeah, we don't want to downplay. She's she's really good. <laughs> <laughs> who else okay if we're, I don't know if you can build out a top 10 but if you're building a top 5 of Hollywood starlets yeah. entertainers who who's getting like serious consideration or do you already know your top 5 uh, I don't have a top 5 off the top of my head but I think one that always comes to mind is Jennifer Aniston that's gotta she's gotta be in there really and, dude uh, Jennifer Aniston yeah. is twice your age son yeah, you know what? I I loved watching Friends when I was younger, so I don't know if that has to do with it. But, Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, she's she's definitely up there. Okay, that's one, one of five. Come on, James, let's that's build this one list. Of five. So uh, let's 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 fill up the rest of the list then. Um, wow. Uh, Blake Lively? Does she do it for you? Yeah, she's. I, I like her in there too. She's good. She and the talent. She's uh, she's pretty good in that one. Um, what about um, Jennifer Lawrence? Uh, I don't think she's in my top five. No, she's she's cute, but not yeah. She's not she's not hot. Um, yeah, I'll have to give uh, you know what a, a Canadian girl, that Rachel McAdams. I like her. She's good. Oh yeah, Rachel. Okay, yeah. she she's totally like she totally has that girl next door kind of like um, cuteness and attractiveness to her. Oh, for sure. Rachel McAdams. Okay. Um, when I think of Rachel McAdams, I go to Ryan Gosling, and his girl is um. Oh my gosh, um, Eva Eva Mendez. Eva, uh, she's okay too. I, I want to put her in my top five. I, you know what? I think I'll have to put the flavor of the the month in there. Kate Upton. I think I'll throw her in my top five right now too. I have a good Kate Upton story that I have to tell you off the air. <laughs> I, I look forward to hearing. That <laughs> yeah, one. I got next time. Next time we hang out, we got to tell you. Okay, so you're at four, dude. You got you got a pretty good, Jennifer Aniston, Blake Lively, Rachel McAdams, Kate Upton, and number five. Uh, now, no, this I'm is just off the top of your head. For people listening, yeah, this, this is, is just right off, off the top, top of his head. head. I didn't, didn't get put time to put my thought into this list, but, you know, I, I keep going back to, I don't know if you saw, uh, the, or I didn't see the movie, but I remember seeing the music video for a song, Jessica Simpson, in one of her, uh, for that uh, Dukes of Hazard movie. I yeah, but, well, wait, video. James, wait, wait, let me just, I got to slow you, I got to stop you right there. You, yeah. You're going like Jessica Simpson, like, O2. Yeah, that's way back there. Because yeah. cause, <laughs> she doesn't look like that now. Like, she's she's. Even I don't struggling. know why that, that thought popped into my head for that music video, but I guess I'll, I'll have to throw her in there for that. She was, I, I didn't, wasn't she like the first one to do, 
I feel like it was a burger commercial for either Carl's Jr. or like Sonic. Yeah, she was. She started that. Yeah, she, I think Kate Upton. Kate Upton can thank her for uh, for that because I think she was the one who got the first gig for that. Yeah, and she just and I don't even know if she actually took a bite of the burger. She's just like holding it by like a car, and then just like, or she yeah. was like a car wash or something. Maybe I'm mixing it up with somebody else, but she just looked ridiculously hot. Yeah, very well played by her. Yes. So uh, I was um, I was watching um. Actually, you know, I'll stay. I'll stay with the Hollywood starlets. So, I'm watching. Um, I'm watching Letterman the other day, and uh, Lindsay Lohan is on it. And Lindsay Lohan is more famous for being a train wreck than she is for being an actor. And she's had like a 20 year career. Started this cute little girl, and she was awesome in Mean Girls. And um, now she's just like now it's like. She's probably in like death pools, which is horrible to say, but she the way her lifestyle is is pretty it's pretty uh colorful, let's say. Could you think anybody could get away with her antics and still have a sports career? Like like entertainers and athletes are held to different standards. You guys have to be perfect or else you, there is a mountain of criticism uh thrown at you guys as, as athletes. Um but if someone had a a, a lifestyle like hers, do you think they could survive in sports in 2013? You know, I think that might be tough. I think usually, you know, you, you kind of get maybe one or two chances to, to really show these changes, and then after that, if it continues to happen, I don't think people have time in uh, athletics for for that kind of stuff. So I think that definitely would be tough to, tough to, to go with for that. Why do you think that? Um, athletes are held to a different standard than entertainers. Well, you know, I, I think too. Was, our a part of our uh, thing is just just being obviously taking care of yourself, and well, you, it seems like you're not focused when you're always in, if you're always getting in trouble and always doing stuff like that. So I think that's got to be part of it. Does it? Um, I mean, you're a young dude. You're how, you're 23, 23, or 23, 23. So you're a young dude, and like, and Obviously, you you like to have fun. You know, you enjoy your your life. Does it? Do you wish? Do you wish sometimes that like? And now you play in Toronto, which is we'll we'll get into that in just a second. Which the microscope is massive for you guys. Um, do you wish sometimes you could just like escape and just not be uh, the the subject of criticism if you were to just enjoy yourself for say a whole summer? Yeah, you know, I think that's it's a, it's a fine line between obviously you gotta have some time to yourself to unwind, and that's usually what guys tend to do in the, the off season, just to kind of get away, get out of the kind of the limelight a bit, and just kind of decompress. And I think that's the beauty of uh, that's, that's the stuff you got to kind of do when you're not in season and stuff like that. But when you're in season, you got to make sure you're ready to go, and, and that's the key. Is if you show up to play and be ready to go, uh, that's all that really matters as far as that stuff. Now, when you were growing up in New Jersey, um, what do you remember about the Toronto Maple Leafs? Like, say well, when you're, like, uh, between, like, 5 and, let's say, 13. You know, my, my dad is, uh, he, he is a huge, like, in the history of hockey and stuff, so he always would kind of talk about the, the Leafs and the Canadians and those teams and their histories and stuff. So I, I'd say versus your average American hockey fan knew quite a bit more about the, the tradition behind the Leafs and the Canadians and that sort of stuff. So my dad would always have their games on and we'd love watching uh, Ty Domi, Matt Sandin, Gary Roberts, guys like that. So uh, I, he, he definitely uh, kind of uh, broadened my horizons as far as hockey history and that sort of stuff. So I'm thankful him for that. You're, I guess, a little too young to remember uh, what Doug Gilmore and Wendell Clark mean to the city, even though the Leafs haven't won, as I'm sure you're reminded all the time, <laughs> they haven't won since 1967. Um, do you do you understand how big those two guys are to the city? Oh, for sure. I think, you know, you see different things on the Jumbotron during the games and the reaction those guys still get. And, uh, yeah, I think they obviously mean a lot to this uh, organization in the city and uh, they're definitely guys that uh, people still get excited about to this day, and that just shows how uh, how much they meant meant to the city and the team. That's the last hockey question I'm going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> one, actually, no, I have one more. Uh, 
one um, important element to the game of hockey as you approach uh, the second season is the playoff beard. Um, what are your plans for said playoff beard? Because I have never seen you with that much, with very much uh, facial hair, and I'm not sure if you can grow a full beard, James. Yeah, you know, I, I'd like to have a clinch a playoff spot before we start talking about playoff beards, but, you know, I think looking back in the last couple of years, uh, I, I think I, I need to redeem myself a little bit. It, <laughs> it hasn't been too good. <laughs> what are you, so what are you going to do to make sure that your beard comes in, like, uniform, and it has, you know, has a, a few, like, like a, maybe half an inch to an inch of, of hair, like, is there anything you can do to prep your face? You know, I'm looking for any type of tip I can get. So if you have any uh, advice to me, I'm more than willing to, to take it. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if, 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 much, if I if I knew the answer to that question, then I'd probably have a way better one than I do. So I don't know. <laughs> so if anybody, any Toronto Maple Leafs fans are listening to this conversation, hit him up on Twitter. It's at jvreamer21. You probably already know that because you're probably following him on Twitter. But your suggestions and how James Van Riemsdyk can grow a full, uniform, thick beard for the playoffs in 2013. He is taking all suggestions. Make sure you mention him in your tweets, at JVReamer21. Okay, now speaking about, so I'm watching this, um, I just watched this today. Matt Barnes, basketball player, plays for the Clippers. He's on Grantland.com, which is uh, Bill Simmons' Uh, his like website. Bill Simmons, the most famous sports writer in America. Uh, he has his collection of writers. It's it's a great site. So Matt Barnes is talking about uh, the the unity of the Clippers and and the chemistry, and then he starts talking about Kobe Bryant. And and Kobe is like he said the most competitive person he's ever met on or off the court. Now even if he dislikes Kobe Bryant personally. The way that the media is now, do you think he could ever say that publicly? If he could ever say what publicly? That he, that he dislikes him? Kobe, yeah. And he played with Kobe last year in uh, Los Angeles. He, so he, play, he played with the Lakers last year, and now he plays with the Clippers. You know, unless he's really looking to make, him, make a name for himself, that's something he should probably maybe steer clear of, just because, you know, the kind of pull that Kobe has in that city, so you never, you never know what could happen. For the record, he didn't say anything bad. He, he praised them and... Uh, and and you know he said that he was and he said that they're friends. He they met when Matt Barnes played at UCLA and Kobe would go work out there in the summertime. Okay, so when you played with Philadelphia, uh, were the bigger rival for the Flyers in your time was it, was it the Bruins or the Rangers? Uh that's tough to say. Is we did play the uh, played the Bruins in the playoffs a couple of years there, and then. Obviously, we always have heated games against the Rangers, but I guess you have to go with the Rangers just because you play them six times a year, and it always it seems to be a fierce uh, match out there. And now you're with uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and uh, the Montreal Canadiens are the historical uh, rival, but in the last decade, in my opinion only, I think Philadelphia and Boston has given them more trouble. Now, if you, James Van Riemsdyk, dislike the player on either team, on uh, Philadelphia, for whatever reason, or Boston, or even Montreal, and you were asked about that player in an interview, how much self-editing are you doing in your head as you're answering those questions? Yeah, you know, you, sometimes you got to be careful and you got to keep your uh, your thoughts to yourself because you never know when you could cross paths or uh, <laughs> cross paths with someone. So it's best to maybe save that. I know some guys seem to write that stuff in books at the end of their career, so that's always funny to read about stuff like that so like ultimately you have to say even though you dislike a guy maybe a guy's scrappy maybe the guy's dirty maybe the guy has you know has for he's 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 pissed you off or gotten under your skin or did something to uh to insult you or whatever so even you take all those things into consideration ultimately when a mic is in front of your face or there's a or there's a camera in front of your safe you kind of have to say nice things about that player or that you respect uh his game how bad does it hurt sometimes when you're in those positions and you have to say something nice about someone that you don't really like yeah i, I hear you on that. you know what it's kind of funny on the flip side though a lot of times those guys that you kind of hate playing against when your teammates with them it's uh they're probably some of the more likable guys on your team so uh 
it's kind of interesting how that all works out. Has that? Do you remember a time when you were asked about player X, and you had to you had to self edit your comments about player X just because you know the landscape of the media, things get back to people, or you just you guys have a an unwritten rule, I imagine, in hockey where you can't really throw other dudes under the bus. Do you remember a time when you were asked about it? Okay, so think about a guy that you really dislike, because I'm sure there are there's one or two guys, and have you ever been asked about that player? You know what, I, I, I don't think I have. There's a couple names that are stirring in the back of my head, but I'm going <laughs> to take those to my grave, I think. <laughs> Just say one of them. Just say the initials of one of them. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> I'll uh, there, there, come on. so has there have you been in a room where like like who's the guy the teammate that you played with that really doesn't give an f I won't say f but like who just will say whatever even the even if there's a mic or a camera in his face. Uh, you know I think he kind of definitely says what's on his mind is uh you have to give uh Nas Kadri some uh, some credit for that he definitely speaks his mind so uh, he's interested in the what he has to say is definitely uh got some uh some good things good things to say good thing like good things in in a sort of ba- good like, things in an interesting way <laughs> good things in like in a oh wait the cameras are gathering let me just i'm just gonna lean in a little bit just to hear who this guy might rip or just who who what this dude might say yeah not necessarily that he's the, the rip scares but it's just funny that you know he uh you got to give a give him credit he says what's on his mind and says how he feels and uh, it's it's always kind of interesting to see what he has to say. James, I'll uh, to borrow a line from the great Tony Kornheiser. I'll get you out of here on this one. Uh, three big movies coming out this summer, uh, all appeal to different kinds of nerds. The new Superman movie, Iron Man three, and the new Star Trek movie. If you could rank them one to three, one being the movie you look forward to the most of those three. Once again, it's uh, the Man of Steel. Iron Man 3, and I think the Star Trek movie is called Into Darkness. Which one of those movies are you more the most excited to see? You know, I've never really gotten into any of those series there, but I'd probably go with Superman, I think, for those. Wait, you don't see, like, so wait, you don't really, is it those kind of movies meaning, like, comic book movies or, or like, sci-fi? Oh, just, those, just those three in general. I, I, you know, I like the uh, those Batman ones I think are pretty good, but some of those other ones I never really have watched so I can't really yeah maybe I maybe I should see him and get 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 with the get with the program here but uh I don't think it's such a yeah. bad thing it's not it's not yeah. bad. I, mean, I think they're I, all going to be with Superman though Superman yeah. um you mentioned Rachel McAdams uh, earlier in the podcast as one of your top 5 um Hollywood a- entertainers let's say um true or false you cried watching the movie The Notebook <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> uh, and that's and that's a great way to end this conversation. Uh, James Van Reemsdyke from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Thank you for this. On Twitter, you can find him at JV Reamer twenty one. JV at R E E M E R twenty one. Are you on Instagram? Uh no, not Instagram. Just uh, just Twitter. Just Twitter. Uh, so you can you can follow his life, read his thoughts, and see his pictures on Twitter, and obviously every Saturday night, uh, the entire country of Canada is watching him play hockey, and uh, you can also see him, um, and, and, I, and I don't want to speak for uh, the Leafs Nation, but for all the people in Toronto and all the people across Canada who the, who the, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs are their team, you can certainly follow this man as he attempts to carry Leaf Nation into the playoffs and deep into uh, the springtime. Thank you very much for this, man, and um, we'll hang out soon. All right. That sounds good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast.